We're live. Are we really? Yes. Oh, <laughs> I thought she was joking. No. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. Um, it's Thursday, which means it is Ladies Who Lunch Time. I'm Marcy Bailey. I'm Audrey Humphreys. And we are today the ladies who are lunching. So thanks for being here. Um, we're excited today. Um, we are in our Cameron Village Village District store. I love that you're with me. Thank you. So th thank you for having me today. For those of you that don't know Audrey, she is our manager at our flagship store in Raleigh. She also happens to be a very experienced appraiser, a certified gemologist appraiser. Yes. So when we knew today that we were going to be talking about aquamarine, I knew that she was the perfect person to join us because she is so knowledgeable. Um, so we're going to be sharing lots of fun facts with you about aquas, what to consider when buying aquas. We've got some fun um, history and some really um, special and important aquamarine jewelry pieces mm -hmm. to share with you guys from history and royalty and all kinds of goodies. And fun then stuff. It is, right? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. So many good things. And then we're going to also share with you guys some alternatives. So if aquamarine doesn't float your bo boat or if it's not in your budget, we've got some good alternatives to share. Mm-hmm. You got to um, have alternatives. Right? Yes. Okay. So why don't we start by talking about kind of like aquamarine's 101. So I think one of the most interesting things about aquamarine is it's a barrel. So when I say barrel, I'm saying B-E-R-Y-L. <laughs> Not the kind that you pour water in yes. a barrel, but barrel. And it's a mineral species, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And what other gemstones that um, our audience would know about are also barrel? Well, one, one of the biggest ones, of course, is emerald. Yes. Which is... A gemstone, but it's May's birthstone that we know of. But yep. um, you're gonna you're gonna see em emerald. Most people know it's that beautiful, highly saturated green, kind of like a Kelly green. Yeah. Um, St. Patrick's Day green. There we Today. go. Everybody, St. Oh, Patrick's right. Day Happy green. Happy St. Patty's Day, yes. everybody. So it's kind of it's um, that color, and that's probably the barrel that most people know. Yeah. Um, so. Aqua is obviously one of your, your other varieties, but mm -hmm. there's another one, the Golden Barrel. Oh, that's that true. I didn't think people, about that. Yeah, that's really people, pretty. You, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You will also see that, especially in a lot of antique yeah. jewelry, is usually where you'll see your Golden Barrel. And that can sometimes confuse people with citrine. Yeah. So citrine's that golden color as well. So a lot of times people will see Golden Barrel and think, think it's, it's citrine. A citrine. Mm -hmm. Just like Blue Topaz and Aquamarine. Yeah, exactly. So, and we're going to show you guys side by side Blue Topaz and Aquamarine mm -hmm. so you guys can understand the difference. I know one of the things, I remember one time you and I went to Orlando to, um, you had to get recertified for your CGA. Right, right. And one of the things, so certified gemologist mm -hmm. appraiser, one of the really important things is um, being able to understand the difference in color. The color. It's huge. We did color tests and it's, it's just amazing because you have to see the different levels and variations of color. When you think about, you know, today we all know about ombre and how it goes from that light to yeah. where it gets to a more heavily saturation in color. Uh -huh. It's a great way to think about gemstones and colors of gemstones and yeah. colors of gemstones not just aqua but um emeralds and beryl and you know um, sapphires, amethyst, sapphires yeah. are all going to have that ombre effect in color and that is generally how it's judged and graded and so in aquamarine um you're going to see the very the very lightest of uh, pale that you can um get to and that is it almost looks like a transparent clear um gemstone that you can barely just see like the hint of blue and sometimes it can look like it has just a, a hair of gray is yeah what you're that is true it. it's see. almost clear but like looks slightly gray you're yeah, right yeah absolutely just that hint and um one of the things i like to to think about aquamarine um is aqua everybody knows what aqua is water mm -hmm. and marine is of the sea so water of the sea. Yeah. And it was believed, you know, a lot of sailors back in the day, they always believed that it was a gemstone of protection. Yeah. And uh, it was the gem of the, the treasures of the mermaid. Um, and so when the, these sailors would wear it for protection, when they were, you know, sailing these seas and uh, storms would come about and they would literally 
put it in the ocean to try to calm the seas. They would throw their rings off yeah. and put the gemstones in the ocean, Trying believing to calm that the seas. it could calm the seas. Yeah. And so therefore, the aquamarine now is known as a gemstone that will literally calm you. Yeah. And that's one of the things that it's known for, is for protection and a calmingness. And I love to think about it as everybody goes to the beach and the ocean, it's just, it's just a natural calm. Yeah. And so we think about that um, with the colors that you'll see in aquamarine. When you go around the world, you see the, the sea in a lot of different colors. Sometimes you see it in more of the greens, yeah. a little bit more green. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you're going to see it in more of the, the very saturated blues. Yeah. And it's just like the water that we have in our oceans that God made us. Yep. From the, the green, teal, aquas of the Caribbean to the real saturated blues. And, and that's a great way to know that, you know, what colors aquas are going to come in. Is just look at the water, the ocean. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, and technically, just to, to, to do some technical um, about aquamarines. So what is making the stone, the barrel variety, actually blue is mm -hmm. the element of iron. And there's two different types of iron that impact the color in the stone. So you're going to have one type that's going to give you that true, like, icy blue. And then the mm -hmm. other iron actually can give you kind of, like, some secondary hues and introduce some of that, that green. green color. Mm -hmm. Um, we always like to talk about treatment and what to think about when you're buying your aquamarines. So just like when we talked last month about amethyst and how heat treatment is an accepted practice. It's normal. With amethyst, that is also the case with mm -hmm. aquamarines. Yeah. It's like me putting on my lipstick. Yep. I just, you know, just need a little enhancement <laughs> to make me a little bit more beautiful. Well, that's what they do with yeah. colored stones. Yeah. Colored gemstones are generally, and it's just the norm in our industry, that they've had a little enhancement, and yeah. so heat is one of them. And so aqua, when they heat aqua, mm -hmm. um, if it's green, sometimes what they're trying to do is they're trying to remove some of that green yes. hue and get it to more of that saturated blue. blue. And the mm -hmm. way that that happens is the iron, the type of iron that's in that stone that is making the stone appear more green, when it is heated, it actually turns to the other type of iron that makes the stone more blue. So by introducing that heat, it's changing the actual element mm -hmm. of iron, and that's what makes the stone more blue which I think is so cool. It's great. Yeah, it's, you know, so cool. I can't wait to change color. I know, I right? get to the beach. I love to tan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. So, so greenish blue, greenish blue to blue green is the color that you're looking for. Absolutely. Ideally. Um, um, and, and I'm just going to say this with all color. If you love a certain hue mm -hmm. and a certain color, there is, it is, color is all about personal preference. Yeah. Are there, are, are there colors that are more desirable and more rare and therefore make that gemstone more expensive? Absolutely. But still, if you love like the, the aqua that has a more of a green hint to it, yeah. by all means, that's the one you should have. Yeah. D always pick what you love and what you will enjoy wearing. Yeah. Um, some people, you know, unless you're doing for investment purposes, yep. you're going to be the one wearing it. And yeah. you're the one that needs to love it. I personally love the aqua that has a hint of green. But I also love the really blue. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think it's worth having both colors in your collection. Um, of course, I love all these gemstones. But uh, anyway, so don't don't ever forget that it's all always about your personal preference and what you mm -hmm. love. One of the things that you do need to know about aquamarine, which is a lot different than its cousin, um, Emerald, is aquamarine should be purchased with clear transparency. Yes, I you, love that you're talking about this. Yeah, yep. you, sh you should not um, see aquamarine that is heavily included, um, it, it cloudy. Should be a, cloudy. It should yep. be a clear. A lot of times it's needles that you will see running yep. through it. Um, and that is not what would be considered a higher grade yep. aquamarine. So when you're, when you're looking for aqua and you're purchasing aqua, it should be clearly transparent, nothing obstructing the visibility of the light being returned to the eye. Yep. Um, you will see on the, on the other side of that coin, which I love, when you usually see a cut of an aquamarine that is a cabochon, like these yeah. beautiful earrings that Marcy's wearing, generally they take aquamarine and they are literally cabbing, which is the style of the cut. That dome, and that dome shape that we've talked about. That dome shape. And what they are doing in that, they are to get that color. It's usually more of your 
gemstones that have a lot of that, um, those In needles inclusions. and inclusions yep. that are running through them. And therefore, if it masks, and so all you're getting is the pure, beautiful color. Yeah. So. Um, well, and this is a good example too. I've got a couple other. So guys, I pulled um, aquamarines from my personal collection that I wanted to share with you guys. And it's so fun too. And it's so funny until we started talking about color and blue versus mm -hmm. green. I didn't realize that I'm naturally attracted to more green. The green. But obviously, I am because all across here, these are my personal stones, and they're Beautiful. all very green. Beautiful. So a couple neat things that you guys probably haven't seen before that I wanted to share is first this pendant. This is an aquamarine and I hope we can catch it. Can, I don't know if you can see it on camera, um, but it is a carved aquamarine. So it's a dome shape like Audrey was talking about, but then literally they've carved like a flower pattern. And just like Audrey was saying, you can see on the back here that the stone has a lot of inclusions in it, which is probably why they decided to carve yes. it. Mm -hmm. um, but I personally love it. I think it's such a neat piece. Well, see, that's because you're a gemologist too, Marcy. And yeah. We love inclusions. Yeah, we do. Inclusions tell us something that it is proof, positive, natural. Yeah. And we, a lot of times, inclusions can tell you the origin. Yeah, where, where that's true the too. Country of yeah, origin where are they from? from? Yeah, which but, is so um, neat. Yeah, we, we find out a lot from those inclusions, but they're fun to look at. So. Audrey, have you ever seen a cat's eye aquamarine? It's been a long time. And that, did you? you have, I hope, so I hope you guys are going to be able to pick this up, but if we could, yeah, dim the lights a little bit, it might yeah, show up say, more. Let me turn that okay, off. let's see. Let's yeah, try that. there you go. Um, so, whoa, chatoyancy. Sorry, is one natural um, phenomenon that uh, you can find in aquamarine. It's very, very rare, very rare, and generally, it's always going to be. You're, you're never going to see it in a clear, transparent aqua. It's going to have to be in included, heavily included to see that because it, it takes that to show up that chatoyancy. So inside the stone, it actually has inclusions that are like needles mm -hmm. and they're all going in the same direction so that when light is top. put on the stones, you can literally see a line and that's your cat's eye running across the stone. Isn't that fun? You, that is very rare. You hardly ever will see that in the um, aquamarine. aquamarine. I bought these. Mm -hmm. I haven't done anything with them yet. Ladies, what do y'all think I should do? They're not exactly matched, but I was kind of thinking do do earrings. Earrings, earrings right? look great. That's fun. Lens and yellow gold. Oh Ooh. my gosh. Put a little diamonds, some little I need, diamond I need to do accent. that. Beautiful. Um, and then I had to share this. So this is a stone. So most aquamarine, you guys, is mined in Brazil. And this is a stone that I bought specifically from someone out of Brazil. And this is so neat. You can see half of the stone is like cloudy or milky, mm -hmm. which you will see a lot of times if you see beads, they're going to be this kind of milky color in aquamarine. And then the other half of the same gemstone is just that perfect mm -hmm. transparent, transparent crystal color, both in the same stone. So I thought that was and so you neat. Can, you can kind of see that. Oh, yeah. Marcy's got us a great picture. So down, usually you'll see that frosted in in the host material where it's grown. And then you can see as it reaches up and continues to grow is where you start with the transparency. Okay. For all of us that aren't as knowledgeable as you, can you tell us what is host material? The, this rock that it's growing from. So when, this, when it's mined out of the ground, mm -hmm. what it's attached to, they remove right. it attached to, to that there. material. Correct. And that's generally where you'll start to see the frosty part that Marcy was showing you in her the piece over there. And then it starts to move up to its transparent state. And you guys can see here, so this is how it comes out of the ground, which is so cool. And it's long and the linear, mm -hmm. the rods. And so that's why typically when you see aquamarine, it's going to be cut into like rectangular shapes mm -hmm. or more elongated shapes because the crystal structure really lends itself to that shape. So pear shapes, um, ovals, emerald cuts, emerald ovals. Cuts. That's generally all you see. Yeah. Really. It's rare and to see around. I, I just want to say, look at how beautiful the crystals are. I, I mean, I mm -hmm. just, th that is just to me gorgeous right there. Those beautiful crystals and that, look, I mean, the blue. Yeah, it Isn't looks it like gorgeous? it like, is it, like glowing. It is. It's just, and and you can see why it's the, the, the gemstone that lends itself to calmness. Yeah. It's just looking at that just brings a beautiful calmness to you. And um, it's just so bright and, and the sparkle and the energy, it just, it's all good. Love it. Okay, so... Aquamarine, we talked a little bit about um, how sailors used to utilize it mm -hmm. and would throw it into the sea, but 
Aquamarine's history starts way before that. So mm -hmm. uh, way back, like ancient Roman, ancient Greece. So like 400 and 80 to like 300 BC, BC. Uh -huh. the, um, the ancient Greeks were actually utilizing the stone. And then also the ancient Egyptians, I thought oh, this yeah. was so interesting, this great. would actually put it into tombs after someone died because mm -hmm. they believed that aquamarine specifically helped people get to the afterlife. Yeah. So it's been a very revered stone for a, obviously a very long, long time. time and for good mm -hmm. reason. I mean, it mm -hmm. just is so beautiful. Um, so the majority of, like I mentioned, the majority of aquamarines are being mined in Brazil. And I love this because the government of Brazil, the people of Brazil, have always utilized their aquamarines and shared them mm -hmm. with royalty around the world um, as kind of like a status symbol of their nation, mm -hmm. which is so mm -hmm. cool. So I wanted to share with you guys this specific stone, which I think is so neat. Beautiful. <clears throat> It's hard to tell from the picture how big that stone is. And, and I'm just going to say, that gemstone, if you were just to, one of the things that we're taught as gemologists is the best tool are your eyes. And when you first look at that gemstone, it does not look like an aquamarine no. or any type of aquamarine you've ever seen. It is so highly saturated in color. It almost pulls out a darker blue, almost like a, a London blue topaz yeah, that you does. would see. So y'all, this stone was gifted to um, President Roosevelt's wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, during their trip to Brazil in the time following their second, his second presidential election in 1936. At the time, it was the largest cut aquamarine um, in existence, and it was part of the president's private collection. It is 1,298 carats. Um, huge. It was cut. Yeah, it's <laughs> huge. huge. Um, it was part of a rough that was actually weighed uh, 1,300 kilograms. It was cut in Amsterdam, and it is now uh, it now resides in the President Roosevelt Library. Um, so obviously, like, the president gave that as a gift, which is so cool. Um, other Brazilian officials that have gifted aquamarine is to the Queen of England. I love this. This is so this neat, y'all. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'm pretty sure we've shared this mm. before with you guys because it truly is the most beautiful aquamarine set I've ever seen. Well, and the one thing I didn't know, Marcy, is is what you were saying. It's her most worn. Yes. Piece. Yes. So this is truly one of the queen's most favorite. So her earrings, necklace, bracelet were part of an original set that was given to her um, by the president of Brazil during her coronation in 1953. And she loved it so much and wore it so much that she decided four years later to commission Gerard to make her a tiara. <clears throat> so this tiara was actually made in 1957 by Gerard for her to wear together. Um, and then what's interesting is fast forward <laughs> almost 20 years to 1971 and the president of Brazil at the time, I don't know if he had seen, like what had, the had seen the quality or... of the, um, tiara and wasn't happy with it but he literally sent her aquamarines and to, to give the to tiara replace. like a glow yeah. up and was basically like here how about you put these in your tiara <laughs> instead of the other ones bragging rights that they were from that brazil. he was part of it yes. well the other ones were from brazil too yeah that's a, so i don't mm -hmm. know but literally so 1971 he sends like these new tiaras so her tiara literally got like a brand new bigger Fresh, more beautiful. beautiful center aquamarine and again, they are highly, um, the, the saturation, saturated. They're so uh, very blue. deep in color. I know, they're amazing. Generally, you do not see aquamarines no. in that color at all. Um, oh, market. look, I got oh. probably salad dressing on my aquamarine. <laughs> um, I wanted to share with you guys some of my personal pieces. So you saw my Elizabeth Locke earrings, which I absolutely love. Um, and these are still available in her current collection. I'm not certain of the price, and you can get them in different stones, but I absolutely love these. I wear them all the time. And then my ring, which, which is I part, love. yes, which was part of our estate and vintage antique collection. Um, again, when we bought this, we thought mm -hmm. it was a blue topaz mm -hmm. until we looked at it closer. And as soon as we realized it was on aquamarine, which is March birthstone, so my oldest, Weatherly, she is a March baby, I knew I had to have this ring. But if most people were to look at it, they would not think it was no. an aqua. And that, and that, it, because, and that's one of the, you know, gemstones that we're talking about that's used a lot. I, um, to, instead of aqua, people will use blue topaz because of that, that blue, they want something that's a little bit more blue. Yeah. And that's why a lot of times when you see them in that color, 
tone, then people automatically go to, oh, blue it's a topaz. blue topaz. Yeah. Um, obviously, because of the rarity factor, you guys, with these being so rare, just to give you guys an idea of this in this color. So this is a 16.2 carat aqua. Um, and it, this ring right here is $16,000. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just... But you see, I the mean, and the color has all to do with the pricing. Oh, though. absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's it's just unbelievable. Um, okay, so let's talk about. You were talking about heat treatment. We actually have a few. Again, mm. very rare, but we actually have a few aquamarines that are not heat treated. Yes. Right? Incredible. So you know, in our world of gem gemstones, ninety nine. We, we were just talking about this. We had an estate show that was fabulous. But 99% of gemstones, colored, colored gemstones that, yeah. are, that are on the market or in our cases, they're all enhanced. Yeah. That's just, it's just in the norm. It's yeah. just no, no big deal. Yeah. We just all know that. And it's what it is. But there's that 1%. There's that 1%, y'all, that actually is mother nature's creation of color and that there was per no like perfect perfect no, perfect out of the ground that no, the only thing man did to enhance it was to actually facet it yeah and and then it gets put into jewelry and yes robert prokoff is one of our designers and every gemstone in his collection is all natural and no that. no clarity enhancement no um type of heat treatments yeah. no, nothing um, this so the is right out of, of the rare. Rares that one percent that's available, um, and it, they're just so beautiful. And to look at those colors and to know that they were not heated Enhanced to get in any way. Right, it's just unbelievable to me when I look into them and just think that this is what God created. It's, it's just amazing. Beautiful. This piece in particular, I love because if you mm -hmm. see around here, so you have your center stone, which is very green and so pretty, and then around it, you have this frosted piece that's actually a carved aquamarine. It's beautiful. So beautiful. they have a frosted mm -hmm. carved aquamarine mm -hmm. that kind of is like the tabletop for this amazing stone. Mm -hmm. So this is such a unique amazing piece a lot of times when you see you you do see aqua carved quite a bit yeah. and you used it in beads a lot people you still get with that just like marcy's earrings here in the mm -hmm. cab one of the things that you don't get in most gemstones that you see that are carved or um, in beads is they're totally opaque and people love the aqua because it still gives you that calming soft but it's almost like a, a semi-transparency. Yes, yeah, so you still you get still some light. You still get that light through it, and yep. it's beautiful. So mm -hmm. people tend, you do see this material carved a lot, mm -hmm. and it is just, it's beautiful because you do get that light coming so through pretty. it, and it just lights it up and yeah. gives it that vibrancy. Um, yeah, but the, these just... Next level. Rare, rarest of the rare yeah, right here. Yeah, just so amazing. Um, you guys love our birthstone bands that's in our Bailey's Band Bar. Mm -hmm. Um, we have for every single month. You can wear them if it's your personal birthstone, if it, if you want to use them as like for your children, if you want to wear them with your engagement ring just to add some color. They're so fun. But of course, because we do every single month, our March birthstone bands are right here. And we have them in white gold and yellow gold. And so I love see them seeing right the moms come in. And this is especially with Mother's Day coming yeah. up. They will literally have, um, you know, Three or four kids, and they want one band to represent each each, yeah. each child. And Aqua is, you know, one of, I, I was going to say, it's almost everyone's favorite. Yeah. Um, it's just as nice, subtle, and Soft. It, looks, it looks so pretty next to Diamond to make that color pop. Yeah, and it comes both ways, guys. Mm -hmm. So you can get either all the way Aqua, which you see here in yellow gold, for $625. But then you can also get alternating Diamond and Aqua. And look how different, I hope you guys can see this, how different the stone looks in yellow gold versus white gold. Yeah, oh, big difference. It looks completely yeah. different. Well, Marcy, your ring um, in yellow gold that you were showing earlier yeah. that you're wearing is yellow. And um, where is this? In white. It gives it a, a whole different coloring yeah. that you'll see. Um, hmm. And it's and again, it's personal preference. Generally, the white gold, to me, lends more of an elegant, a little bit more of a formal look. Where your yellow gold, it's... It, can be a little bit more retro. Yep. Seems like it's a little bit more everyday. Yeah. Um, but it's still, again, it's with personal color. Personal preference. Personal preference. Yeah, absolutely. 
I had a lady come in um, this past weekend that was getting the little birthstone bands. She was getting one for her and her husband to put on the sides of her engagement ring. Oh, so it was like that. her birthstones and then her husband. I love and then that. she like her engagement ring was in the middle. It's like they That's sandwiched, so sweet. Uh -huh. love sandwiched that. together. Um, we have designers. We talked about Robert Prokop. Uh, Elizabeth Locke also does some beautiful aquamarine. This is actually Venetian glass in the middle, and then the stones around it are the aquamarines. So pretty. Beautiful. And then we were just hearing that for spring, some of our new beautiful jewelry that's coming from Marco Bicigo is actually going to be aquamarine. Oh, I didn't get to hear that. So okay. that's exciting. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Um, Oh, and then guys, I want to show you all these loose. So obviously a lot of what we're showing you is larger, but again, like depending on your personal jewelry aesthetic, look at all of these fun, smaller stones. We have like baguettes here, smaller rounds, some different ovals that we actually, I just walked back into our custom workshop and pulled out to share with you guys that are literally to be used for custom jobs. Well, and I love where you can see the variegation of the color. Mm -hmm. You can see from the lightest of the, the green, yeah. the watery green yeah. to the more saturated. Yeah, um, these, uh, these baguettes are so blue, they're beautiful. So that's then, a great representation. And then this one right here, guys, is actually a loose stone that's for sale. Pretty. And it's just begging to be made into a beautiful ring. I think it'd be a gorgeous ring. Oh, Kristen told me how much it was, and now I forgot. I don't want to say the wrong. How much? Okay, that's what I was thinking. All right, so this stone right here, you guys, is $1,100. It needs a bezel. Oh, it, it needs be a so bezel. Frizzy. It needs a bezel so or a halo. Yes. Okay. We can halo it too. That would make I can an see it. It would I make an amazing, amazing engagement ring. And oh, and I want to mention, guys. We've been guys, doing a lot of colored engagement yes, rings lately. Yes. Lots of colored engagement rings, y'all. It's so it good. Is, it is. I love all, it. People want something different. Yeah. So they're just making their own. Yeah. And which um, we love. We're still doing diamonds, but yeah, we've started to see a lot of colored yeah. stones going out for engagement rings. Well, and I think it's worth mentioning too. Aqua is a great stone from a durability standpoint. It's a 7.5 yes. to an 8 on the Mohs hardness scale. So you have diamonds are a 10, then you have sapphires um, that are a 9, mm -hmm. and then right below it you're going to have aquamarine. So it is a really good stone to wear every single day, okay. which I love. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what else? Oh, I have to show what? you this. So this is not for sale. It's part of my personal collection. Um, check this out, y'all. This is an aquamarine. It's that saturated color we were talking about, and this is a Victorian ring. So it's from the 1800s, and it actually has like a serpent that wraps around it, and then a diamond in the head of the serpent. That's beautiful. Which isn't is it very so, popular in Victoria? Yeah, in isn't that so cool? Very pretty. Very so, unusual. Yeah, so that's kind of like a fun vintage piece to share with you guys. Um, and then I also wanted to mention my story. If you're somebody that wants, again, something smaller, look how cute in the middle here, this diamond band with a baguette aquamarine, and then we've layered it with some of their enamel mm -hmm. bands. So you can get that color of the aqua. Uh -huh. Without actually getting the aqua. Right. Let me tell you the price Great on these. idea. The enamel bands are, let's see, with diamond, 1,120, and then the actual center one with the diamonds and the aqua is 1,055. Some of those pretty blues I wanted to Beautiful share with blues. you guys. And then we've got to tell them, so a lot of times, and I'm one of these March babies, and I love aquamarine, but sometimes it doesn't always fit in your budget. Yeah. So one of the alternatives that a lot of people use for aquamarine is blue topaz. Yes. Y'all, we've got gorgeous blue topaz. Yes. And I'm just going to say it might not all be about budget. For me, it's about the saturation of color. Mm -hmm. I love seeing the blue. I want to see this vibrant, this beautiful blue color that you you generally don't get from aquamarine, but you will get from blue topaz. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, generally you will see a lot of blue topaz on the market just because that is and the color is so consistent. And the color is so consistent. Very consistent. Yeah. Very consistent. I love these huggy hoops, guys, with that emerald cut blue topaz. Those are new. I know they are I brand love those. new. I just bought those when we were in LA this I last didn't get time. To see. Was, They're seven hundred and fifty dollars. Beautiful. Seven hundred fifty dollars. So fun in fourteen karat yellow gold. And you can see y'all this. So blue topaz co comes in all those ranges of color. So even like this right here, as a um, gemologist, this would literally have to be tested to to tell whether it's aqua or blue topaz. Yeah. I could just not look at that and go, mm -hmm. this is blue topaz or so that's true. aqua because it looks so close. Just like when Marcy said she bought this ring and everyone was thinking it was blue topaz. Yeah. It had yeah. to be tested to be able to yeah, tell to the verify difference. that it was aqua. So that's how close these two stones can be related yeah. is you really have to do testing sometimes to, to tell which is what. Well and mm -hmm. then to throw a kink in it even further, <laughs> um, tourmaline. 
Oh, we have a tourmaline <laughs> ring here. Yo, look at that blue. So there are a lot of stones that can imitate an aqua, which is the reason it's so important to make sure you're buying from somebody that you can trust, guys, so you're getting what you are being sold. Right. Um, but I also wanted to pull this uh, Julie Voss bracelet. You guys know we love Julie Voss. We sell a ton of it. It yes. is fun fashion that's affordable. I pulled this piece because it gives you that it's fun cute. blue color in the faceted stone. They facet it, which mm -hmm. takes a lot more time. And this is $130. It's gold plated. But I thought, that was, I thought that was fun. And it's a great piece to add to your stack. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't have any Unless, bracelets even on. If you, even if you, you know, want to wear it by itself, you have that color. And look how pretty. I just want to say, one way I love seeing color is not to match what you're wearing, um, but to actually do that contrast. Like what Marcy has on here, she has on her aquamarine earrings. And yep. look, she's wearing black. Yep. And look how it, in this bracelet next to that black, it just really pops yeah. and it just makes the color come to life. Yeah. So, there's no, I can't wear it. That's the other thing I hate. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's, true. that's not my birthstone. So, if you love the color, get the gemstone. Yeah. It has nothing, like, that's so you know, true. Right. Just wear what you love. Love it. Wear what you love. Enjoy it. Oh, she's got some great Okay, so here. I know EJ is telling me I have to hang up. No, but I have to already. <laughs> we got to show you this stuff. But this I, stuff yeah, we great. have two more things we have yeah, to show you. Okay, 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 okay. So this, y'all are gonna freak out when you see this. This lives at the Smithsonian next to the Hope Diamond, to to give you an idea of its significance and its importance. Hold on, I'm gonna tell you about it as soon Largest. as I find my info. It is the world's. Hold on, it's called the Dom Pedro. Yeah, here we go. Okay, it's truly the most beautiful example of aquamarine. It's the largest faceted aquamarine in the world. It weighs 10,363 carats. Crazy. It's 14 inches tall, y'all. It's giant. And it's carved. And yeah. he, you know, we were talking about aqua being all about the sea. And he, he calls that the waves of the sea yeah. that are inside And if you that. see it in motion, look it up mm -hmm. online, guys. The Dom it's Pedro. It really does beautiful. look like the waves the of the waves. sea. Mm -hmm. um, okay, then last but not least, it's either like one of your favorite ladies or one of your favorite like ladies that you love to hate. I love to, her. Love to hate. I'm sorry. I love Meghan Lady Markle. Di. I love her. Well, and Meghan Markle. Okay. Well, we'll go different. Right? Okay, see? So, <laughs> so okay. y'all, look at this. Lady Di. Yeah, so Lady Di, this is her aquamarine. This was part of a set that she had made. She had a matching bracelet. She wore it a lot. Mm. Its most famous appearance was at the Christie's auction that happened about two months before she died. Um, where she was auctioning off a bunch of her famous dresses that she had worn when she was a royal. Right. So she wore it here. Um, and then what's really sweet is Prince Harry, He's very sweet. at his wedding, actually gifted that ring to Meghan. Mm -hmm. And you can see her there I love it. wearing it. And one of the things, if you notice, one of the things, and, and I'm going to say in this aquamarine as well as her sapphire engagement ring mm -hmm. from Prince Charles, very simple, classic designs. Yep. You don't have to, you know, get way right out there and, and just think I gotta do something crazy. But just very classic, right? Very classic yeah. that this aqua has set in. Well, um, and that's the nice thing about a gemstone is like they are so beautiful on their own that you don't have to add a lot. No, the color is yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. That, that almost they're beautiful. almost thirty carats for those of you wondering. Yeah. Love it. So it looks pretty. So pretty. She looks great in that dress. Look at her. <sighs> everything about <laughs> everything about her. Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I forgot, y'all. I think that's it. Yeah. Do we get any good questions stuff. or anything in particular that we missed, Nicole, or are we good? I think we're good. We're good? We wanted to hear the price one more time of those um, bands. The My the Story? Oh, the Birthstone. Okay. Six twenty five for the all aquamarine. And then, hold on, I don't want to tell you wrong. Let me look here. Yeah, six twenty five for it all in yellow and all in white, or reverse. And then if you're alternating with diamonds, it's $1,150. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun to stack your, your kids or your family's yeah. look. I love that. I, I know, love they're so the pretty. Mm -hmm. We've only had those in store for about six months, mm -hmm. and they've been such a hit. Oh, they're so pretty. It, it's, it's a great price point, yeah. and it's a great way to, to stack yeah. two or three, four. Things, amazing. And it looks great. Yeah. All right. I Aqua. Think that, I think that's it. Aqua. 
Happy March. Happy St. Patty's Day. Yes, go out and have fun. Yeah. If you have any questions about anything we talked about or anything in general, just let us know. We're here to help. And thank you so much for being here. Next week, it will be Kristen and Emily talking all about our Ring Try On kit and all of the amazing oh, styles that. It's fabulous. that are offered. Yeah. So Ring it's going to be so on fun. Kit, it is wonderful. Yeah. So thanks for being here, and we yes. will see you next week on Ladies Who Lunch.